If everything goes according to plan tomorrow, we're going to see NASA's Orion spacecraft make its first flight around the Earth. But because this is vintage space, we're going to talk a little bit about the time NASA last tested a new gumdrop-style spacecraft. We're going to talk about the unmanned Apollo testing. Orion is designed to be a game changer for NASA, and this mission tomorrow is just the first step. It's a short, high Earth orbital flight during which NASA will test all the key systems of the new spacecraft. Launching hopefully at 7.05 in the morning Eastern Standard Time, the mission will last just four and a half hours. The Delta IV rocket will put the spacecraft in a 3,600 mile orbit. By comparison, the International Space Station orbits at about 200 miles. Orion will orbit twice before splashing down in the Pacific Ocean, and that entry is one of the key tests on this mission. The entry will expose the spacecraft to temperatures of up to 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 80% of what the spacecraft will experience when returning from the moon. There will be other tests on this mission as well, like testing that all the pieces of the spacecraft and rocket that need to separate, like the launch fairings, separate on time and cleanly. So while this two-orbit test flight might seem like a pretty tame first flight for new spacecraft, it's actually NASA doing what NASA knows. This is basically the same thing that the agency did when it started testing the Apollo spacecraft in the 1960s. Originally, there were two different Apollo spacecraft, the Block 1 and the Block 2 model, only the latter of which could manage missions to the moon. Individual pieces of the spacecraft were tested on boilerplate models during static ground tests, drop tests, and launches using the Little Joe booster rocket. There were only two unmanned Apollo test launches before the first manned launch was scheduled. SA-201 and SA-202 together proved all the vital systems of the Block 1 spacecraft. The next launch was meant to be the first manned mission, but this was of course the ill-fated Apollo 1 that saw three astronauts killed on the launch pad. The Apollo 1 fire prompted some significant changes into the Block 2 spacecraft, and also one big change into the way that it was going to test the new spacecraft. There would be no manned Block 1 flights. The Block 1 spacecraft would be retrofitted with Block 2 systems, and only Block 2 spacecraft would carry men up into space. After a brief hiatus, NASA returned to flight testing with Apollo 4. This was the first test of a Saturn V, and it flew a Block 1 command module with a simulated unified hatch, one of the main new systems introduced into the Block 2 after the fire. The spacecraft's initial orbit was low, just 113.7 by 116.1 miles, but the S-4B upper stage fired a second time to simulate the translunar injection burn. After the spacecraft separated from the spent rocket stage, the service module's own SPS engine ignited to accelerate the spacecraft to 36,000 feet per second, simulating a return from the moon. Apollo 5 was an unmanned test of the lunar module alone, and Apollo 6 was another unmanned command service module test that basically duplicated Apollo 4's flight plan. On Apollo 6, the spacecraft's SPS engine was used to boost the spacecraft into an orbit with an apogee of more than 13,500 miles. Again, the re-entry this spacecraft experienced was equivalent to returning from the moon. The very next mission, Apollo 7, was the first manned Apollo mission. So tomorrow's EFT-1 mission might seem a little bit on the tame side, but it's actually par for the course for NASA and how it tests new spacecraft before sending them aloft with men on board. But of course, this is only half the battle. If we're going to see Orion fly to an asteroid, to the moon, and even to Mars, we're going to need the SLS rocket, and that is a whole other story that still needs to develop on its own. I will likely be up watching and possibly live tweeting the flight tomorrow morning, so follow me on Twitter as AST Vintage Space for those updates, and also follow me if you want some just vintage space updates every day of the week. And don't forget to subscribe right here so you never miss an episode.